Hey everybody, David Swore here once again with DJ Cox for another episode of Frenemies. And this DJ may be the most interesting one we do, the one we fight over the most, and that is your New York Mets. And so, man, the Mets have had a crazy offseason. They got a billionaire now for an owner. Um, but let's back up a little bit further and talk about the 2020 Mets. Go ahead. Let's talk about the 2020 Mets, David. Let's not forget something here. 26 and 34, fifth place. In but the- wait a minute. What happened to, I'm not taking into account anything that happened last <laughs> year. But suddenly now we're taking to, into account all this. So explain that, DJ. Not as individuals. As a team, I take it into account. As individuals, I don't weigh it as deep. You know, that's how I'm going with that, David. So. That's where I'm going. Team of individuals. But anyway, see see what I have to deal with. I tell you, man. So first place in batting average last year from this team. Um, yet they finished in last place. I don't get it. Second. I would first, not have guessed that. First in average. That's great. Second and on base, David. Uh, but 13th in run scored. So I don't know how you're first in average, second and on base, but you're 13th in run scored. Maybe lack of clutch hitting. That's probably what that kind of boils down to. Those are weird numbers. Uh, it doesn't make much sense very much. Uh, this is where the problem was last year for them. 26th in the ERA, 24th in whip, and their relievers were 18th and 21st. So not much pitching at all. Noah Syndergaard went down and didn't pitch. They were 3-7 and seven versus the Braves. That's a problem. You got to be better than the best team in the division. They're not even close. The ground was a Cy Young candidate once again, 4-2. 238 ERA, 104 Ks and 68 innings pitched. He dominated. Um, just an average team that didn't produce. And um, man, it just was a rough year for them. It, you know, it just they just didn't they just didn't have their second pitcher last year with Noah Syndergaard going down. So it really hurt them. They finished at the bottom. It was a rough year. Didn't Stroman go go down as well? Yeah. Or maybe maybe COVID got him or something. I don't remember. But I don't remember hearing anything about I'd have opted out to be honest with you so the offseason DJ what an awesome offseason they get billionaire Steve Cohen as the owner he says listen I'm spending the money and he has put his money where his mouth is now it was interesting so if I'm not mistaken they hired a GM and then had to fire him because he was a pervert (laughs) he used to work for the Cubs and uh so that 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 should have been the tip off from the beginning, but so now Sandy Alderson is back. He's playing GM as well as as uh, president of the team, and man, DJ, did they go crazy! So tell us about those additions. Let's start with the man Lindor. I love this addition. I do. Um, just he's got his eight one. He's got a one hundred sixty two game average, David, of twenty nine bombs, eighty six ribbies. 285 and 346 on base. That's fantastic. He's got 138 career homers with 411 RBIs, 285 batting average, 346 on base in six seasons. He's a four-time All-Star, two-time Gold Glover, uh, four-time top 15 MVP guy, second in Rookie of the Year voting, uh, run scoring machine, RBI machine. Um, He's just one of the best shortstops in the game. That was a sweet addition. They're awesome one. They also got James McCann from the White Sox, Jonathan VR from the Blue Jays, Albert Almora Jr. from the Cubs, Kevin Pillar from the Rockies, Taewon Walker from the Blue Jays, Joey Luke Chessy from the Padres, Trevor May from the Twins, uh, Aaron Loop from the Rays, Jacob Barnes from the Angels, Mike Montgomery from the Royals, Jose Martinez from the Cubs, Cookie Carrasco from the Indians, uh, Caleb Joseph from the Blue Jays, Brandon Drury for also from the Blue Jays, Mal- Malik Smith from the Mariners, Jordan Yamamoto, they also signed, and Tommy Hunter from the Phillies. So what a busy offseason as far as addition goes. What did you think of him, David? Man, I thought it was really best-case scenario if you're a Met fan. You get one of, if not the top shortstops in the league. They fortified the rotation with Carrasco and um, the other guy just slipped me here. But they also picked up, yeah, Taiwan Walker. They picked up Lucchesi in that trade. Don't discount that. Um, you know, he's somebody that's had, had a little bit of success. And then they also fortified the bullpen a little bit, uh, getting May. And then they added some other guys there, which I think they've already released Tommy Hunter, but 
They've got just got some interesting guys in there. Aaron Loop, you know, he played a good role with the Rays last year. So, man, I, and you think about it, DJ. So they had the top uh, lineup in the league last year, and it got better, man. McCann behind the plate now, who's great handling pitchers too, but he also hits. Uh, man, I mean, this, this lineup is crazy good. Um, so why don't you run down it real quick? Just give us the – Give us the rundown of that lineup. Yeah, so Brandon Nemo in center, eight bombs, 18 ribbies, 280, 404 on base. Francisco Lindor will bat second, eight homers, 27 ribbies, 258, 335 for the Indians last year. Michael Conforto, right fielder, 931, 322, 412 on base. Pete Alonso, 1635, 231, 326. Dominic Smith, 10 homers, 42 ribbies. 316 batting average, 377 on base. Jeff McNeil, second base, four homers, 23 years, 311, 383 on base. J.D. Davis at third, six homers, 19 ribbies, 247 batting average, 371 on base. And James McCann is your catcher, played for the White Sox sparingly a little bit, uh, kind of a DH slash catcher role last year for them, was a big signing for them. So nice lineup with guys like Jonathan Villar, um, Albert Almora and Kevin PR on the bench. So pretty loaded bench there as well. So DJ, we talked about this a little bit off air, a little bit. This is where we need to fight a little bit. Okay. Do they have the best lineup in this division? I mean, no. Well, the stats said last year they did. And now they've added Lindor and McCann. So I'm not, I'm not sure that they don't have the best lineup in this division. Now, it's hard to say that because you got Freddie Freeman and Acuna uh, and Albies and those guys over there, Ozuna, in Atlanta. But even with those guys bashing last year, the Mets still had the best lineup, and now they have Lindor and a lot better defense. So, I don't know. You're going to have to explain that one to me. 13th in a run scored, David. They're not scoring runs. They're hitting, but they're not producing the runs, and that's the problem. You know, you got to score those runs. I mean, you can get on base all you want, but if you're not scoring, that's the name of the game. You got to outscore your opponent. So that's where they struggled. Uh, I definitely think that they took a step forward. I really do. But man, this line, this division is the best division in all of baseball from top to bottom. I truly believe that. Uh, all five of those teams have a legit shot at winning this thing, and that's crazy to think with the Marlins, but they do. I mean, look at the team they produced last year. Um, I think that the Braves are hands above everybody in this division, and then I like a couple other teams as well. I love this lineup. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to discount this lineup very much. There's a couple guys I'm still not sure about in this lineup, uh, one of those being Nemo. He's still got to prove it to me. And Dominic Smith has to do more than just have one great season. I know he's had a couple here, you know, one really good one and uh, one average one the last couple of years. So those guys got to prove it a little bit to me. Um, but it's it's a it's a good lineup. I really like it. J.D. Davis, I'm not really a big fan of, but um, they come into a, a lot of depth here on the off field, and I really like that as well. So um, it'll be interesting to see. Super interesting. And like I said, you think you compare them position by position with the Braves, and I'll move on. So Freeman's better than Alonzo, but Alonzo did hit 50 some bombs. Uh, then you got McNeil with Ozzy Albies, and to me, that's probably a push. Uh, then you got Lindor and Swanson. That's Lindor. Then you got JD Davis and Austin Riley. I think JD Davis is probably a little bit better there. Uh, on the outfield, let's see here. You got Acuna. Is he playing? He'll be playing left, right? Yep. So that that would be Acuna and um, Dominic. Uh, Smith. Yeah, and so Acuna's definitely got the the leg up there. Who's in center for the Braves? Well, they got uh, Pache against Nemo there. And we're gonna call that a push because we don't know anything about Pache. And then in right field, I guess you're gonna have uh, Ozuna, Acuna, and Conforto. Okay. And that's a, that's a slight Braves edge, but it's slight. So I'm telling you, man, don't discount these Mets. So let's jump over to the problem from last year. Let's jump over to the pitching staff, and they did a lot to improve that. So run down the list for us. Jacob DeGrom, 4-2, two, 238 ERA, 104 Ks in 68 innings. 104 Ks in 68 innings pitched. He's that the man. That is crazy. Cookie Carrasco, 3-4, 291, 82 
68 innings. How how long is he out for, David? Did you read up on him at all? I don't know how much he's um, I actually have it right here. Let me go ahead and keep reading. I'll, I'll, Marcus uh, Stroman did not play last year. I think he opted out. Uh, Taewon Walker, 4-3, 270 ERA, 50 Ks and 53 innings. David Peterson, 6-2, 344, 40 Ks and 49 innings. Joey Luke Chessie, 0-1, 794, 5 Ks and 5 innings. Uh, and Noah Syndergaard is hurt, looking to come back in June, July at the latest, I, I would guess. Um, and then you got Edwin Diaz as your closer. Trevor May, Dylan Pedantis are your other studs out there in the pen. So, Yeah, and uh, Carrasco is on the 10-day DL, but he's basically got to start over again with spring training. He pulled a hamstring. So you're probably looking a month out, uh, something like that, two to three weeks at least. Um, but, DJ, I like this rotation, man. I like it a lot. David Peterson is underrated, you know, a good, a good uh, young pitcher. Stroman, we know he's a gamer. I really like Marcus Stroman. I always wanted him in Yankee pinstripes because he's just a gamer. I loved him in the World Baseball Classic a couple years back. Thought he, I thought he was great. And then Taiwan Walker, man, he's a guy, you know, that was really highly touted. Is he putting it together, DJ? Because it sure looked like it last year. I know, shortened season, blah, blah, blah. But <laughs> he really, you know, kind of started to put it together last year. And that's your number four. So why, why should I hate this rotation? They also have the best pitcher in baseball at the top of it. So what makes you think this is not a playoff rotation? I uh, just don't know, man. I'm just not, you know, I think that there's, there's better rotations in this division. I really believe it. Like I'll take the big three in Washington over these guys any day of the month. You know, I, I take the, the Braves one through five over these guys any day. Um, that's for sure. You know, Nola and Wheeler at the top of the Phillies are and are absolute studs, and Uvalde as a three. You know, maybe your four and five are better than them, but I like Spencer Howard too. So, man, I'm telling you, it's just the depth of this division, and their pitching is solid too, man. I just think that these guys are a little bit below all those teams I just mentioned. Now, Strasburg's a big one. If Strasburg can stay healthy and be Steven Strasburg, then the Nationals, I will take over them. If, if Strasburg is going to be hurt, then I will take this. Metro Who's the four and five in Washington? Uh, Joe Ross and John Lester. DJ, come on, man. They're not better. They're not better than the Mets. You're going to take Joe Ross over Taiwan Walker and whoever that other guy, John Lester, who gives a rip about John Lester over David Peterson. He's 100 years old. Come on, man. Uh, I think Scherzer, Corbin, and Strasburg healthy and ready to go. I love, I love those. Everybody, David. I'm a big Patrick Corbin fan. I think he's super underrated. Yeah. And obviously Scherzer's the man too. But, I mean, you got DeGrom. You got DeGrom in this rotation. And oh, particularly you got Syndergaard back in, like, July. Man, that's brutal. That's going to be brutal if they do get him that's back. That's a key, David. That is a key. If Syndergaard comes back and is Noah Syndergaard, which he's been – very down up until he got hurt, you know. So is he going to come back as the man or is he going to come back as, eh, that's a big, 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 big part of this puzzle here, David. It really is. And if he can be the man like he's known to be, I like it a whole lot more. I'll give you that. Well, and, and think about this, you know, their bullpen, it could be a little shaky. But what if Noah Syndergaard comes and pitches out of it? Not after the after gets to come back. I mean, I'm telling you, I think this is a good team right here. So position battles, DJ, what do you got for position battles? Outfield. Um, I just, there's a lot of outfielders on this team. It's just Dominic Smith. I love Almora's defense. Kevin Pillar to me is a stud. Like this guy needs to be starting somewhere. And um, I just don't know where they're going to put him. Cause he's, he's so good on defense and he can hit the ball. He's, 30 homers and 90 ribbies two years ago, I think. He's no joke, man. This guy's a great – I think he's going to be Dom Smith's defensive replacement. I think it's exactly what he's going to be. Yeah, and, you know, if Dom Smith's not hitting, I'm putting Pilar out there full time. So, this is a battle a little bit, you know. Like I said, Brandon Nemo's not winning a job yet either, in my opinion. Like, he's got to look over his shoulder a little bit too here. And, um, obviously, you know, Conferto's fine. Like, you got to put him in the lineup every day. But between those four guys, man – Almora's not going to hit over those other three, but he can play deal better than almost all those guys. So 
you're going to have to mix and match those four. And uh, it'll be very interesting to see how he uses all that because it's it's a nice outfield they got. I like that a lot. So what do you think? Yeah, I agree. You got a lot of guys out there. You still got guys like Jose Martinez. You know, he's going to want a few at bats here and there. If I'm not mistaken, um, actually, now that I'm looking at this, he's he's on the 60 day DL, so they're probably not going to worry about him. But if, doesn't he mash just absolutely destroy lefties? If I'm if I'm thinking right, is that right? Yep. Um, That's why the Cubs got him last year. Is he mashes lefties and then. Uh, he, you know, he will factor in later on, so that's a good point. Yeah, and then you got Jonathan VR. He's another good player um, yep. that they've got. How they're going to work him in. Um, so it's interesting. And then those bullpen spots. That bullpen has been a weakness. Um, I like their closer probably a little bit better than you do, but they got Jarris Familia out there too. He's a, a you know a good arm. Uh, but Tances, I, it, may, it, it made me wonder when the Yankees kind of ran from him. And uh, – you know, last year he, he just never could find it. He's so big and lanky. I think he has really a big problem repeating his delivery. And if you'll remember, the Yankees have sent him down multiple times or they had Phantom DL stance to get him right. But when he's right, he's absolutely filthy, unhittable. Um, you know, Robert Gelsman, I like him pretty well. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how the bullpen shakes out. It'll be interesting to see if someone steps up. If they could somehow get that bullpen in shape, I think the rotation's – going to going to be good enough to carry him uh so so we shall see so any prospects you want to talk about absolutely let's uh let's go with ronnie mauricio the number two shortstop prospect <laughs> now that they just signed lindor to a 48 year deal he's going to be blocked a little bit at short perhaps he's a second base option in the future here now that lindor is here long term but um if they if they uh He's 19 years old. He, he's a switch hitter. He throws right. He's six foot three, 166 pounds. So he's a bean pole. He's a 2022 ETA. Very raw and athletic prospect for the Mets. He's got a lot of uh, to figure out with his swing. Uh, he's got a 53% ground ball rate in 2019, which is a little bit of a problem. Below average speed, but he may provide a lot of pop in the in that bat in the future. So uh, Ronnie Mauricio. If he's not trade bait since Lador just signed like a 13 year deal or whatever he just got overnight, um, then let's just see if he can play second or if he's going to end up being trade bait for the Mets to try and go get somebody uh, that needs to help them win the World Series if they get close, if they're starting to contend a little bit here. So that's my guy. What do you got? I got Khalil. You know, he came over in that uh, Kansas City. Boston swap when Ben Attendee got traded. The Mets were kind of just in there. You know, it was kind of weird. And so it makes me wonder if they see something in him. He's a third-round pick of Kansas City back in the day. Um, so he's kind of knocking on the door. He's uh, 22 years old, knocking on the door of the major leagues. Um, you know, he he's, he's hit wherever he's been, and he uh, stole 53 bases in the minors. Uh, and so it's going to be super interesting to see kind of what how he fits. Doesn't this smell like a playoff pinch runner, the, the famous playoff pinch yeah. runner, the Dave Roberts that, that Boston used to have that just wore the Yankees out? Yep. Um, Good point. I thought it was a sneaky, sneaky, sneaky deal when they, when they got him. So we'll see how that pans out. Like I said, for them to insert themselves into that trade, it makes me think they're up to something, DJ, so – so we shall see. So, DJ, have you ever been to the Mets Stadium? No, I have not. Um, Shea Stadium from 1964 to 2008, I have not. And then City Field came along uh, 2009. I have not been to that. Um, I want that giant Pepsi sign out in right field, though. I want to put that in my backyard. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I, want yeah. that, I want that thing. Um, it's got a cool scoreboard board in center field. Looks really cool from the outside as well. And we talked about this when we talked about, you know, the whole Yankees going to new Yankee stadium, like you were talking about, like New York has so much to offer that if you were to actually go to the new, new York stadium, the new Yankees one, you would have to kind of plan it to where the Mets, um, you go yep. see them as well. A lot of times what happens here though, is, is the Cubs and White Sox are not home at the same time very often. So it's a little tricky if you want to catch both, it does happen sometimes, but, um, a lot of the time you'll see them gone and one team will be home. Uh, I don't really know why that is. They're kind of far away from each other as far as 
you know, about being in about nine miles away from each other, which doesn't congest everything. So um, it's interesting. I hope that, you know, if I go see the new Yankee stadium, it'll be to see the new Yankee stadium first and that'll be a bonus. Um, Cause I got to hit that one. Uh, but no, I have not been to that. What about you? No, I, I would love to know. Shea looks like a pretty big dump to me, to be honest with you. Um, but the new field looks amazing. I actually t took like an aerial tour of it online one day, just checking it out, and it looks really nice. Uh, I'm hoping that the area around the stadium is nicer than it is at Yankee <laughs> Stadium. And to be honest, DJ, I'm just going to say this. I would love to go to New York, but I am I don't think I'm going there right now, man. It, it seems like a pretty big dumpster fire. Uh, in New York. I, I don't think I'd be comfortable walking around with my kids there. You know, just the other day, uh, a poor uh, Asian lady got beat to a pulp by some idiot there. And I, I'm sorry, man. I, I just don't think I'm signing up for that at this point. I don't want to ride the subway again with my kids and stuff. So it's going to be a while before I visit that one, but it, it looks absolutely amazing. So DJ, favorite all-time Mets memory. Yeah, I mean, that 86 team, that was my first World Series that I ever saw, David, them and the Red Sox. What a World Series to join the join the ranks of being a fan on, to be honest with you. I was rooting for Boston, but this was my first World Series, like I said, and I um, had ever watched. They had Daryl, they had Doc, they had Keith Hernandez, they had Gary Carter, they had the star power, and they had Mookie hitting the ball in between Bill Buckner's legs, and it just it just was awesome to see that. Uh, what, a, what a collapse by the Red Sox. Uh, they would have won that game if he fielded that ball in six games. The Mets won it and went to game seven the next night where the Mets ended up winning that game as well. So what a World Series. Uh, that 86 season, very special to me. And um, it was really cool to see uh, the first time I ever a uh, team celebrate the World Series title. So that's by far it for me. And, and Dwight Gooden, we got to give that guy another look at the Hall of Fame. I'm just saying, I think he deserves a little more love than he gets. but. That's just me. So what do you think, David? Yeah, I love Doc Good. One of my favorite all-time players is Daryl Strawberry. I loved it when he was with the Yankees. I loved it that he tried to punch Armando Benitez right in the face. And I'm, I'm hoping he landed a few of those punches. I couldn't tell. I, as I've stated before, I hate Armando Benitez with an almighty passion. And so <laughs> Graham Lloyd and Daryl Strawberry, you're my hero. But I'm going to go with the 2000 Subway Series, DJ. Don't have all the stats and everything in front of me, but that was the buzz. That was really the the best – one of the best Yankee teams of that era. And uh, they buzzed all through the Mets, and so that was pretty cool. So my favorite memory is the Yankees over the Mets in the Subway Series in 2000. A lot of drama there, Piazza and Clemens. <laughs> Clemens was totally roid raging. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. That was the strangest thing I think I've ever seen him throwing that bat at Piazza just – I actually have to admit I lost a little bit of respect there. I just thought it was just so weird that he did that. But anyway, there was definitely some bad blood there, which made that uh, an interesting series. So, DJ, it's trivia time, and I know you have an undying love for country music. And so <laughs> I'm mixing the Mets with country music right here. Oh, no. Which country music star tried out for the Mets? Jason Aldean. Kenny Chesney, Tim McGraw, or Garth Brooks? Wow. Well, I'm going to say Tim McGraw because his dad was a pitcher in the major league. So I'm going to go with Tim McGraw. Is that correct? That's incorrect. Now, the, oh. reason, the real reason that you said that is your favorite song is Indian Outlaw. Uh, and so <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that's the real reason you said that. But it was actually Garth Brooks. And I really? guess it was in 2000. I vaguely remember this. I, I was confused by this, too, because I thought Garth Brooks tried out with the Padres. And I think at one point maybe he did go to camp with them. But they actually gave him 17 in bats. 0 for 17 before they cut him. Now, they every team needs to bring an average guy uh, to spring training. If you're going to let Garth Brooks come, he definitely wasn't a good athlete. And so I'm going to volunteer, DJ. Okay that I want to try out for is the Orioles because I think I might have a chance to make it as a pitcher. How about you? I already told you you would make that rotation, David. You're, I'd take you in any – you know, like this is kind of a – I like that because Will Farrell tried out for all 30 teams, I believe, a few years ago. That was <laughs> hilarious. Um, 
Yeah, I'll try out for, let's see, I'll, I'll just try out for Seattle. You know, why not? Because I'm used to it raining all the time. So I might as well just go to a team where it rains all the time and I can just be in doldrums and just do that kind of thing. And I'll probably, you know, miss the team and, and then, you know, just go out into the woods somewhere and just, you know, whatever. But <laughs> no, I, I, I did not know that. Uh, Tug McGraw was, a, I mean, he was on the mound in the 1980 World Series when the Phillies won it. He threw his glove up in the air when they won it. So that's why I thought, you know, maybe Tim McGraw, he probably, Tim McGraw probably could play some baseball if I'm not mistaken. He probably learned a lot from his dad. So that doesn't surprise me if he was a really good baseball player. Garth Brooks, I cannot see him playing baseball. So uh, as much, as little as I know of country music, I could definitely see Tim McGraw pulling anything off in his life, you know, and like his wife and all that kind of stuff too. So. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Uh, so All right, so my David, David, Kevin James, who is a famous Mets fan, and Doug yes, Heffernan in one of our favorite shows, The King of Queens, we both yes. the show, named his daughter after this, after his Mets fandom, okay, and who did he name his daughter after? Is it his daughter's name Shay? Is it Barry for Daryl Strawberry? Or is it Carter? For Gary Carter, I'm going with Shay because it is the most girl name of that group. So I'm going with Shay. That is correct. You are yes. Doug Heffern and Mets trivia master. <laughs> I had no idea he was truly a Mets fan. That is one of my favorite shows. I laugh out loud all the time over stuff that happens. I love Arthur in that show. That's my favorite character. Yep. And, uh, you know, we all have a little bit of Doug Heffern in us. Let's be honest. That's what makes that show so funny. <laughs> we all tell white lies to our wife and try to get away with stuff. And so I love that show. <laughs> and we all get in trouble for it. Like he does. Yes, we, well. we still always get caught just like Doug does. So why do we keep trying? Oh man. It's definitely a, a nightly ritual for me is watching some King of Queens. So love that show. One of the greatest shows of all time. I agree. <laughs> all right, DJ. So this is the point in the show where I'm right and you're wrong. Where do you have this awesome 2021 Mets team finishing? Fourth place, David. Fourth place in this division. I don't buy it. I'm not seeing write this down. <laughs> you got to write it down. This is one Fourth of those deals where I'm going to come back and call you an idiot for a year, just like the <laughs> Angels. So this is, this is that point. Okay, this is the second place team. This is a playoff team. They have a playoff lineup. They have a playoff rotation, and if they need to, to do something to fill a gap, like maybe in the bullpen, they got playoff money, more money than anybody, probably more than the Steinbrenners. So this team right here, easily second-place team. They're going to be nipping at the heels, and guess what? Fangraphs agrees with me. They're projecting them for 92 wins in first place. I don't know why they hate the Braves. I think that's stupid, but um, second place, DJ. Not buying the love, man. Not buying the cookie. I don't think they're going from fifth to second anytime soon. Uh, they're getting there. I think that they're one more off season away from being a legit contender and turning this thing around. I just take, you know, I take three teams in this division over them. Um, so I'm not, I'm not buying the Kool-Aid. This is everybody's sleeper team going from worst to first. Everybody's calling that like the twins did back in the day. Not buying it, David, fourth place. You'll take one little step up this year. And then you got to prove it in the later years. So we're going to fight about this one all year long. <laughs> well, I'm right. I'm definitely writing this down for sure. <laughs> so DJ Mets teammates. <clears throat> oh yeah. I got, we got Adam Misha and that's it, right? He was it. He was it. I don't know if we had any other ones besides Adam. That is not. it. So all that was in it. There. Billy, he was definitely a Yankee fan all the way. I'm trying to think of any other New York guys and I can't really, Think uh, of course the twins were Orioles guys. Yeah, Marcus and Gus were also Yankee fans, and you and um, all the smart yeah. people. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or bandwagon jumpers one one of the one or the other. So absolutely. Well, DJ, I guess that wraps it up. We uh, buzz all through three teams tonight. Just got a few more to go, and we'll have everything done. But happy first day of baseball. I think it's so weird that a bunch of these teams won't play tomorrow. And I think it's really stupid. So uh, yeah. the commissioner, if you're watching this, that's dumb. Quit doing that. 
And uh, but we'll be able to watch some more baseball tomorrow. I know you're on spring break. I'm sure you're gonna be parked in front of that TV. <laughs> so uh, I don't blame you one bit. But uh, please like and share our podcast. Uh, we really appreciate appreciate the views we've been getting. And you guys have a good night. Yeah, have a good night, everybody.